Well, here we go. Two in a row. That's not so bad. I'm back. I'm Robin. Uh, This is me reading stuff. Uh, This is another Friday night after dark podcast. I liked hanging out with you guys last week. The process of doing this podcast again really seemed to change things for me a bit. Uh, I felt perked up. I felt happier. I felt a little more productive. So thank you to all of you and to anybody who reached out and sent me an email or a message. It really was nice of you. And I appreciate it. I'm going to start right in. Kind of like last week, I jumped right into Question Corner. But this week, we're switching it up. We're going back to Recommendation Corner, guys. I love recommending things. I've been criticized. Uh, people from Europe have called me, um, have called this section of the podcast a little too, what did they call it? Like commercialized American or something? Just because occasionally I'll mention like a pet product or a rug company that I like or something. Um, I'm still really like hurt about that, aren't I? I can't let go. <laughs> That was like 15 years ago that somebody said that. I haven't even been doing this for 15 years, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, Recommendation Corner is where I just tell you some things I liked. That doesn't mean you have to like them, too. But I love sharing. You know, this podcast started as uh, basically as an adult version of show and tell. That's kind of what this is all about. I love sharing something I read with people. I love reading out loud. And I love talking about all the things I like. And I do a pretty good job, I would say, overall. I don't really talk a lot of shit about the things I hate. I never talk about anything literature or poetry or written wise that I dislike. That was one thing, one tenet I stuck to the whole time that I've had this podcast, which is over nine years now. And I, I, I don't tell you guys what writers I hate. And I do, I do dislike a lot of writing, a lot of poets, especially, but mainly I read poetry on here to you guys. And It's always in celebration, not in, you know, just bitching about something. Um, So that being said, this is not that. This is Recommendation Corner, another thing of show and tell where I just tell you guys some things that I like. Let's do this. Okay, so the first thing that comes to mind is I've always listened to it. I don't listen to many podcasts, but the one that I continually have listened to uh, off and on throughout the years, as we all kind of do with podcasts where you are dedicated and then you fall back and then you catch up and you know that's kind of how pod the beauty of podcasts right where you can do that it's it's uh it functions so that that is possible unlike the old days of radio or you know when you when you missed things you missed a tv show or whatever anyway enough about the history of why podcasts are good but uh i'm talking about Miriam Webster's Word of the Day podcast, read by lexicographer Peter Sokolowski. So he himself has written many of the, I don't know how many, but definitions for the Miriam Webster Dictionary, which in itself, that is, whoa. Is there a cooler job than that? I don't think so. Now that I think about it, it never occurred to me until now. He has a very pleasant voice. It starts out with him reading the basic definition of the word. He explains usage in a sentence. I love the choices they make on this podcast for the sentence uses, uses, (laughs) whatever. Uh, They're always very interesting ones. Um, And then there's a brief history of the word that he tells, interesting anecdotes, that sort of thing. Um, The only thing that's annoying is currently there's an Amazon Music ad with, honest to God, you guys should all tune in. If you, here's one thing I will bitch about. This person's voice in this Amazon Music ad is easily the one of the most annoying voices I've ever heard in human history. So go ahead and check that out, and then you can get an idea for what kind of voices I find annoying. I'm very sensitive to voices, if you haven't noticed. I talk about that a lot in my life, and I feel bad because it is one thing that I'm a little bit... I think I might be judgmental about it, and maybe I need to work on this, and I apologize, actually, because it is a jerky thing to say. Although, you can change your voice to a more pleasant sound. I I personally changed my voice when I was about 20 years old, entirely. You can ask anybody. It's true. I worked hard. I I didn't speak for several weeks in order to get it straight how I wanted to talk. I've told the story on here before. If you guys need me to hear, if you guys need to hear it again, let me know, but... I did. I changed my voice into this voice. I mean, it was essentially like this, but it had some real annoying ticks to it. 
Uh, so anyway, back to Peter Sokolowski and Miriam Webster's Word of the Day podcast. I highly recommend it. You'll hear words you already know, but once you hear the breakdown and how the word came to be originally, it's always interesting. And the best part of this podcast is that it's only two minutes long every single time. And if it weren't for that annoying person with the Amazon ad, uh, it'd be even better. So there you go. Thank you to Peter Sokolowski, who has nothing to do with this podcast, has no idea I'm talking about it. But I really love that guy, and I love this podcast. So that's one that I recommend. And I like anything that requires so little time of us, you know? Okay, what else takes little time that I like? Um... Well, splashing water on my face. That would be the next big thing I would like to tell you guys about. My therapist recently recommended it. Sometimes, you know, I have obsessive compulsive disorder. There's uh, that is, there's no doubt. I was, I'm finally officially clear on that. Um, and I get stuck in lo- loops, you know, in a, in a lot of different ways. And so she recommended splashing water on my face like going like if I can't get out of a certain thought pattern or whatever it is that I'm really needing to snap out of I go to the bathroom get the coldest water possible and just splash water on my face a lot of times it's more than splashing I'll like drench my face in in cold water and honestly boom like that it well that's not always true but for the most part it does help I don't know if if anybody recalls this but There was also a traumatic event I lived through regarding some of my pets that um, that was just awful. And I can't even talk about it. But um, another therapist had recommended rubber band snapping, keeping a rubber band on your wrist and then snapping it every time I got stuck thinking about the the horrific uh, vision of what happened. And it. You know, some people don't recommend that. It's sort of an outdated thing because it's also a little bit too close to self-harm. But the way I did it, I didn't hurt myself, but it was like just the sound of a rubber band snapping. And it kind of like snaps me out of it, (laughs) not to use the word snap again. Um, So the splashing on the water, uh, the splashing of the water on my face has been really helping me. And I highly recommend it. I've even been desperate. I was in the car and I wasn't at home and it was after a medical thing. And I just like (laughs) I have a clean canteen full of really cold water all the time and I just like I probably looked so crazy because the water doesn't come out of it very well like most water bottles like you've got to like really work hard to get that stuff to splash but I was doing that on my face and it (laughs) I just all of a sudden realized how horrible this all sounds but anyway it was great and it worked so moving on uh, do I have any other items for you on Recommendation Corner? Just, what are those called? Water crackers? Cars water table crackers? Oh, those those crackers that just taste like you're eating cardboard, but they're perfect for cheese. I learned about those growing up in the art world. Every fancy art party, if not at like a museum, you no- typically don't have snacks at most art openings, the kind that I would go to anyway. Um, on TV, they always show like there's like, a quartet in the corner of an art opening with like cheese, grapes, wine. That's just not exactly how it goes in real life, to be honest with you guys, at, at art at art events. But at art parties, the after party, that's when you get the good shit because it's always a wealthy person who has enough money for a lot of food. And it's good cheese. And with good cheese usually comes, at least here in America at fancy art parties, what are they called? Let's look them up. I think they're called Cars Water Crackers. Cars Water Table Crackers. I can't read. Table Water Crackers. Okay. There they are. The Black Box. The Classic. The one I like are the Classics. Table Water Crackers by Cars. Um, it occurs to me that I recommend a lot of crackers. Uh, the other favorite I have are saltines. I, I just love it. It makes me feel like a sailor eating, what is that called? Hardtack? Although these aren't hard, they're very del- they're pretty delicate crackers, but I highly recommend them. If you're into cheese and you're eating cheese and you're not eating your cheese on uh, Cars Table Water Crackers or Water Table <laughs> What the hell are they called? <laughs> Who cares? They're good, and I love them. I had some today. You guys want to hear about my lunch today? It was 
Damien bought me um, a new brand for me. I can't rem- remember the brand, but it was some kimchi, and it was made with daikon, carrots, cabbage, radish, something else, something else, and paprika, turmeric. Uh, and it was called Lil Kimchi. That's what it was called. It was from a sauerkraut company, and this was called Lil Kimchi, L-I-L. I hate saying L-I-L. That's a hard lil. It, like, kind of grosses me out to say the word lil. Does that... Anybody else? Anyway, um, yeah, so I had just a little side of that, just a little bit of that. I had my table crackers with a little bit of brie, and then mainly it was a... uh, Let's see, I had bell peppers and carrots, and I had hummus, and I had... God, here's going to be another word I don't know how to say properly, but tzatziki, you know, the yogurt cucumber dill dip, which I love. So that was my little snacky lunch that I had today. Another thing I did want to recommend before I forget is, let me, I wrote it down because I never remember the name of anything I watch on TV. Lost Women of Highway 20. I watched it. I don't do a lot of true crime watching or listening anymore. Um... It turns out I finally got to the point in my life where things were horrifying enough. I don't need any more horrors to be in my brain. And I and I never did prior to recently. But now I get really bad dreams when I watch scary things. (laughs) So I'm laughing because it's absurd because I never had a problem with it, even when I was like three years old. Now I do. But anyway, I saw this on HBO Max. It's also, I looked it up. You guys can find it on Discovery Channel. If you have Prime, I think you can get it through there. Um, it's a very well done true crime series. I think it's only three episodes long about um, a missing women in Oregon along Highway 20 uh, from the 1970s on into the early 90s. And um, Octavia Spencer narrates it, and I believe was the producer. It's just, it it was one of the most, uh, it really grabbed me. And I loved a lot of the people interviewed. And I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but something about the tone of this one was very different and very engaging to me. And it, I mean, it's obviously very sad, a bunch of uh, missing women and uh, that, and then, you know, they were all dead in the end. But uh, anyway, Lost Women of Highway 20, if you guys are into it, I will say that's the last true crime thing I've read in so long. I mean, I've watched in so long and it it was worth mentioning. So I'll say that. Oh, and this reminds me, I don't know why. And I think it was in my other podcast, Robin's Gate, but I want to do a quick correction. I continuously pronounce Robert Haas's name, Robert Haas. (laughs) And I'm so sorry. I cannot get it straight. Robert Haas is one of my favorites. Um, Obviously, poet I've read on here a million times. But um, recently, I was watching a lot of interviews with him and listening to a lot of interviews just because I love hearing him talk. And I heard the interv- uh, the uh, one of the interviewers say his name, and I'm like, God, what is wrong with me? I just have trouble pronouncing things properly. You know, it's not the end of the world, but it's also not great considering how much respect I have for these people. So Robert Haas, I believe, is the proper way to say it. Oh, and he said another thing that I wanted to share with you guys that I loved um, in this interview in particular. He was He spoke of the massive difference between using the word a or the in a sentence. And he just used the example of, poetically speaking, that is, the difference between the man walked in a kitchen versus the man walked in the kitchen. The man walked in the kitchen. The man walked in a kitchen. Oh, I mean, not that one is better than the other. I personally prefer a kitchen. Much more mystery there, right? But I'm not sure if that's what he meant. I just know he was speaking of, I mean, anything that expounds upon uh, that, well, the choice of words being so uh, important and how beautiful a slight change can be. So anyway, that's my Robert Hass comment. That was Correction Corner, guys. (laughs) We're turning everything into a corner. What is going on? I feel I'm really not on my A game, but I'm going to I'm going to keep keep uh, plowing along here. 
Okay, what are we going to be reading today? Let's read. I've talked about it uh, before. I love the poems of Catullus. Uh, not, a, you know, let me read to you about Catullus. Okay. His full name is Gaius Valerius Catullus, was a Latin poet of the late Roman Republic. His poems, 116 in total survive, have been admired and used as a reference point by countless other writers and artists, including Petrarch, Andrew Marvell, John Milton, William Wordsworth, W.B. Yeats, W.H. Auden, T.S. Eliot, Virginia Woolf, Cy Twombly, and Anne Carson. Me reading stuff favorite Anne Carson. Um, so this book, here's a couple. Uh, Robert Frost said, Catullus wrote in the loveliest of lovely things, R wrote the loveliest of lovely things, and also the loathsomest. Um, let's see. James Laughlin said, Catullus could rub words so hard together their friction burned a heat that warms us now 2,000 years away. Isn't that true? Um, and then, so this book I got is Love Poems of Catullus. It's from New Directions. That's our favorite publishing company here on Me Reading Stuff. And it contains several different translations of Catullus's love poems and um, very interesting ones, too. Like very um, kind of some of them like really kind of caught me by surprise and took my breath away. I'm going to start by first reading you my all-time favorite translation of my favorite Catullus poem, which is known as Catullus 85. They've just numbered them, you know, academics have numbered them. And this I've read to you before years and years ago on me reading stuff. Um, by the way, Catullus only lived to be about 30 years old. They're, they're not sure, like anywhere from 28 to 31 or something like that. Maybe not even, I don't know, but there's something you should know. And this poem um, has been translated so many different ways. And I feel that almost all of the other translations of this one ruin it. This one is uh, translated by C.H. Sisson from 1967. Sisson is a British writer, poet, translator. Um, he died in 2003. I think, I think he was a, in his 80s when he died. He lived a long life. That's all I remember. And as I do when I don't know much about a writer, I love to make shit up for their bio. So let me give it a shot here. Um, you know, one thing I remember reading about C.H. Sisson is he was a huge fan of anything by Bruce Hornsby and the Range. That was his favorite musical group. Um, and he... <sighs> Ugh, it's it's hard to even say this, but he, all throughout the 90s, he stalked Oprah Winfrey. Uh, he was even arrested several times. Uh, he didn't mean her any harm. He just wanted to marry her. So that's what you need to know about him. Okay. Anyway, back to his translation of <laughs> Catullus 85. All right, here it is. I hate and I love. You may well ask why I do so. I do not know, but I feel it and suffer. You know, the more I read this, I actually like it better. I hate and I love. Well, no, I like, okay, he did, he did it right. I hate and I love. You may well ask why I do so. I do not know, but I feel it and suffer. I love it. Like, just, just uh, to show you guys what I mean by this, I'm going to just pull up another translation of Catullus 85, and I'm going to show you, translation, how much better his is. Okay. Here's one. Okay. I hate and love. Why I do that, perhaps, you ask. I don't know, but I feel it happening, and I'm in torment. <clears throat> wrong not as good as our oprah winfrey lover okay let's do let's see this one i hate and love wherefore would i do this perhaps you ask i do not know but i feel it happen and i'm tortured well these aren't so bad i, just, I guess i like suffer better than tortured um, back to robert hass's thing about a and v oh here we go here's one Okay. I hate and love. You probably want to know why I do. I do not know, but I do feel I'm being cut in two. <clears throat> Wrong. No good. Bye. All right. So anyway, those are just a few. 
I just talked about how I'm not going to talk shit about anybody who wrote poetry, but the, these are like long standing old translations of it. But anyway, so that is my favorite Catullus poem, I Hate and I Love. You may well ask why I do so. <laughs> I do not know, but I feel it and suffer. <laughs> I can't read at all today. I'm going to do a better job. In the Love Poems of Catullus, I'm going to read you an Ann Carson translation. Um, and this is called Yesterday Licinius at Our Ease. And it, uh, subtitle, Catullus Addresses Licinius with Affection. Here we go. I guess around sunset we started to drink and lay on the floor writing lines for songs. That cold night smell coming in the window. I left about four, went home, opened the fridge, closed it, lay down, got up, lay down, lay, turned, not morning yet. I just want to talk to you. Why does love happen? So then I grew old and died and wrote this. Be careful. It's world sharp. Translated by Ann Carson. That's number 50 in this book. That's obviously not from Catullus 85. That is, let me see where we are at. Ann Carson 50 on page 49. Um, yeah, I don't know what number Catullus poem it is uh, after, but... Oh, I guess it is after 50. Okay, there we go. We'll see. Let, let's see what uh, Catullus 85 was translated as in this New Directions book. Let's see how much I... Okay, they, they gave us two of them. Okay, here's one translated by Ezra Pound. I hate and love. Why? You may ask, but it beats me. I feel it done to me and ache. All right, I might be able to do that one. That sounds really nice. Uh, here's another one by Sid Corman. Hate and I love. Who knows why? Nothing I say chokes the ache. Hmm. This one's weird because it says hate colon and I love period. Who knows why? Question mark. Nothing I say chokes the ache. Well, Sid Corman, I hand it to you for um, originality. <laughs> There you go. But the Ann Carson ones in this book are great. There's a few that are a little too modernized that I don't like. I'll let you guys find those for yourself. But anyway, all hail Catullus. Love it, love it, love it, love it. I can't tell if I'm calm or depressed right now. It seems like they kind of blur into one sometimes. But this is about it for out of me. I really do want to let you guys live your life. I want you to be in your life in this present moment. Feel all the things. Brush your teeth. Eat that food. Go to the bathroom. Read a book until your eyes blur. Pick up your messes. Yearn for more. Settle for less sometimes. It's the ways of us humans to do all of that. The sun shone having no alternative. That's Samuel Beckett. I'm Robin O'Neill, and we both, me and Sam, wish you <laughs> a very peaceful evening. Good night, my friends. Thank you for being here. I love you.